Welcome to Ask Glenn, everyone. Today I have Kevin with me. And for those of you who don't know Kevin's story, number one, he's a phenomenal YouTuber. He does YouTube day in, day out as his full time job. The other phenomenal thing he does is he has two phenomenal kids. And for those of you, who've been um, following Kevin's story just a little bit on Facebook, you know that his son recently had scoliosis surgery. And now you may be thinking, okay, why does this connect to us when? Well, connect the dots we shall get. I had scoliosis surgery, and this is the only surgery that you're allowed to get with scoliosis because when the curve gets bad, the curve gets bad. So I have been watching Kevin go through this with um, his son and his daughter had it too. And this surgery, the scoliosis surgery that we're talking about where they stick to um, two VODs on either side of your spinal column and fuse from the nape of your neck down and it's not fun. But Elijah, we're happy to report, Elijah's doing phenomenally, phenomenally, phenomenally. And so I'm happy to report, I, we had a rough few days, day one, um, going post-op, but Kevin, kept his spirits up, his spirits up, Kevin kept wife's spirits up too, and Kevin kept everyone's spirits up with updates on Elijah. And so I'm happy to report that as we record this today on December 15th, Elijah's doing phenomenally well, but I'm going to let Kevin take it away and share his story with you guys. And we're going to talk about YouTube. We're going to talk about scoliosis awareness. And then we're just going to have fun. And so welcome, Kevin. Well, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here. That I, I don't think I've ever had an intro that good before. I, I may hire you just to do all my intros. Well, I have, <laughs> I have done this before, Kevin. I have done yeah, this you're, Yeah, th this isn't your first rodeo, as they no, say. No, this is not my first rodeo. <laughs> So no, I'm glad I'm, I'm excited to be on here. Thanks for having me. Well, you're welcome. And so could you please explain to my audience what you actually do as a job? Because they're thinking, oh, Kevin gets to hang out on YouTube all day. That must be fun. Uh, it is fun, but that yeah, that's only a small little part of it. Uh, it's funny because my, my parents still don't know what I do and that's okay. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a video coach, uh, marketing specialist and also a content creator. Uh, I have my own business called Kevin Colby media. I named it something that I hoped I could remember at least three of the word, two of the words <laughs> are my name. <laughs> yeah. So I got a pretty good shot at it. Right. Um, but I, I help people like get, get into video. I, you know, most of my clients either, you know, they, they, um, you know, they have, sometimes a hobby, but they have a business they want to take to video or they want to do better video for their virtual, for their, you know, or they're turning to virtual speaking and things like that. So I, I help people just understand the basics of video and get into it. And so they can use it to grow their business or share their gifts. And, um, and that's what I, I love to do. So that's part of my YouTube channel is that I, I like to to share tips and tutorials and strategy and encouragement and just everything from, you know, some editing tips to uh, live streaming. I live stream quite a bit. Um, you know, I, um, I'm even working on trying to streamline some of my gear and things. Um, I, I, I don't believe in having to buy the most expensive thing. You know, sometimes free is great. Sometimes free isn't. But that's what I do. Uh, so it's it's a, just a combination of 
working with clients, creating content. Um, and, you know, and the, and the goal of my YouTube channel is just to continue to reach people and help people and teach people and also be a source of, of income and encouragement. Yeah, that's, that's my goal too. And maybe you can help me when I get to the East Coast because I am struggling with video. People seem to like the live day that I'm sitting in now, but they don't like light. They don't like lighting aspect that I'm like, that's all I got right now. Plus I'm in the midst of a move. So maybe you can help me when I get to the East okay. Coast because um, video is here to stay uh, along with podcast. Let's not forget podcast, but video is here to stay. And a lot of people like that human interaction. Like I personally like, believe it or not, I personally like medical stories, not my own medical stories, but other people's medical stories. And so when you were posting updates on mm -hmm. Elijah, AKA little dude, Mm -hmm. which we affectionately call him, which I'm going to now call him because little dude it shall be. Mm -hmm. And so I particularly like um, medical stories and stories of inspiration. Right. And so I need someone now to help me take my video to the next level because I swear, you guys, I'm going to get this YouTube thing under my belt along with this podcasting thing even though podcasting is a little bit easier to listen to than youtube but um i'm gonna get this youtube thing under my belt that is one of my secret wishes for 2021 is to get a better youtube strategy than i have now well it's definitely i mean you know my my channel grew when I finally got serious about it. Um, the funny thing is I, um, I would, I would tell others, <laughs> clients, friends, people, strangers, you know, Hey, you really need to get serious about YouTube because it can, it can help grow your business and, you know, or if you just want to have fun with it. But a lot of the things that I had learned, a lot of the things I even just knew I wasn't putting into practice. And when I, when I got really serious and focused about my channel and changed a lot of things uh, about what I was doing and how I was doing uh, my content, that's when my, um, my channel started growing. And, um, and, and quite honestly, it, it, it made it more enjoyable. You know, and not every video, not every video finds an audience. Not every video works. Uh, sometimes those that you feel like, oh, wow, this is this is really going to do well, doesn't. But that's part of the game. And um, but it's also part of the fun and part of the growing. So uh, but uh, it's it's, you know, if people feel like, hey, I can, you know, I'll just start a YouTube channel, I'll throw a, vid a few videos up and I'll go viral and I'll just make a lot of money. Then don't waste your time because that, that's. It's just not like that. It's not like a fast food restaurant. You just drive through and order. And by the time, you know, you round the corner, you got your food and you're on your way. Um, and and YouTube wants channels to succeed because it keeps people on the platform and they can make money. And that's what they do. And some people get wound up about that, but it's like it's a business. You know, I mean, pick a store, Target. Target doesn't open its doors just so you can have a place to come and hang out. No. <laughs> yeah. Stuff. yeah. yeah. Target doesn't um, open its doors just so you can hang out. Now, the elephant in the room, has your business picked up because, you mentioned this earlier, because of COVID and because of professional speakers like myself turning to the um, virtual stage instead of the in-person stage? Um, I, you know, I don't know that I can say it's picked up before we got to 2020, I was already thinking about, um, and I know it's an overused word, but I don't care. I'm going to use it. I was already thinking about pivoting my business of doing, doing less, uh, production for clients and then 
switching to helping them do. Um, and because, because for a while, a, a lot of my clients were local and, you know, then pandemic hit that changed everything. So I would say for several months, like probably anybody, it was like, okay, so, you know, how, how do I, how do I adapt to this? How do I do this? Well, one of the things that helped me is that I've been working from home now for, I don't know, two, three years. I have a home office slash studio. Uh, we did some changes to the house and, and, and a lot of it was, um, because of Elias having his surgery. And so that gave me more of a dedicated space in the house that I could, could really make my own as opposed to a corner room, <laughs> you know, that everybody was walking so, through to get to the kitchen. Else, there's benefit to the yeah. surgery. You got the home office due yeah. to Elijah having surgery. That's, that's funny. That's, yeah. Hilarious that you had to make modifications to the house because of Elijah and um and you got the home office because oh, yeah. of it. it was yeah, a blessing yeah. in guys. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's about a, being able to adapt. And yeah. uh I yeah. was on a, a podcast um with a, with another friend not too long ago and, and the whole the whole theme was about reinvention. But, you know, where I think, I think in the later, <clears throat> excuse me, in the latter half of this year is when I've seen more of an uptick in my business. I mean, I, I had several projects that were put on hold, uh, a couple canceled. Um, and, and some of that was because it was more in-person stuff. Uh, some of that was that people just not knowing, you know, what the next few months were going to bring. So they were, they wanted to be more reserved in, in spending. And I get that. But I think in the last half of the year is when I've seen an uptick in, in people that realize, I think that, you know, it's just not, you know, we're not, we're not going to get this, you know, just, we're not going to get over this immediately and just go back to hanging out everywhere. I think that a lot of people that have realized, wow, you know, this, this video thing, I, I can even reach more people than I could before, but I need help doing it. So, so yeah, and I think in the last half of the year, I saw more of an uptick than probably any other year. I mean, not crazy like, but, you know, a lot of it too is like you, you, I mean, I love meeting people and I love connecting with people and, and I hate the sales part of the business, but there is a point of that where you, you know, you reach out to folks and, you know, and you send them a proposal, you talk about something and either they're not interested or you never hear back or, you know, Oh, wow. I didn't know it was going to cost that much or whatever it is. And so, but that's fine. I mean, that's, that's just part of it. But then, then the clients I have, you know, I want to make sure I super serve. So it's, you know, it's, it's been a learning process. I mean, I have a lot of things on my do list that I haven't done yet. Um, but I'll get to. Yeah. And so, Kevin, what is your favorite YouTube channel that I that you think my audience should go subscribe to? Well, I tell you, one of my favorite audio uh, channels for a long, long time um, has been and is Great Big Story. Um, unfortunately, about a month or so ago, um, they posted a video. They said uh, basically like, well, you know, thanks for the memories or whatever. And they've decided after, I forgot how many years, it's only a few years and tons of videos that they are just, they're not going to publish any more videos. The channel is still active and there's still a wealth of stories there. Um, but they're just great, great stories. Um, so that, I mean, th that's what I would definitely check out, but I mean, you know, I, there's a lot, I mean, I, I subscribe to a lot of channels for different reasons, like Peter McKinnon, um, a phenomenal YouTuber. In fact, I think he just won the streamy awards for, um, uh, most influential creator or something like that. Um, just good stuff, good stuff. But then there's, you know, there's other guys that, that I, I just enjoy and connected with and, and love. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge Sean Cannell fan. Um, he's become a mentor and a friend. Um, Scott McKenna, 
Um, you know, I mean, I could go on and on and on. Diana Gladney, uh, Desiree Martinez, Rob Balasabas. Um, but, you know, for for things like stories and things like that, Great Big Story is just a phenomenal. Um, and also, I will say, I think it's CBS This Morning. Um, occasionally, I, I subscribe to them, not not for the news aspect. I'm just not a news person, but um, but they they really do some some really nice people stories. And um, yeah, so if, well, if you know if, if your audience is looking for yeah, for stories like that, those those would be two channels to check out. So great stories and of course CBS Sunday yeah. morning. And I am I'm thinking that a lot of the news channels are getting more and more into video because of the the social distancing aspect. And so, yeah, these news anchors now are getting more and more skilled on Zoom and more and more skilled on video, which is a good thing. Yeah, you know, it's funny because, I mean, my my background was in what's typically referred to as broadcast media. You know, I started in radio was on radio for several years and then got into television and, but it was always on the the creative marketing side. I was a creative director for a Fox station for many, many years. And the funny thing is though, um, and this is going to sound like a very generalized statement. So I realize not everybody falls in that, but, but a lot of folks in traditional broadcasting, just, they still don't get the whole YouTube uh, streaming thing. It's just like, yeah, you know, and, and so it's funny to see some of those, even local news stations start, start just now thinking of using it. And it's like, guys, it's, it's because I think sometimes there's this almost arrogance among, uh, news stations that, you know, we're the news station, dadgummit. We give you the news, we report it, you watch it and that will help you. And, um, (laughs) you know, and it's like, yeah, okay. And I mean, when my kids, I mean, and I have three kids and when, when they were young, they were really young, they got to the point that it's like, oh, wait a minute. There's this thing on, on dad's phone called weather. And, (laughs) you know, I don't have to watch the news and sit through 20 minutes of fluff and, Commercials yeah. just to find out that tomorrow is going to be, you know, sixty and sunny, and um, <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, you point. know, I get you know, point. yeah. So I I, it just it's it's interesting to see traditional media, a lot of it just now, acting like social media just came on the scene. Yeah, like, I, I noticed that. Where have you been? What locked? I mean, you've been hiding under, but um, those of a uh, those um in traditional media long term traditional media don't know this whole social media thing and don't know how much of a wider wider audience we can reach just with our voices and just with YouTube and just with streaming on and so Kevin, mm-hmm. what is it your favorite book? I would have to say I'm and full disclosure I'm I'm not a big reader. My wife is why I mean she my word she's just reading all the time and and we have this running joke. <laughs> it's like, well, why not just watch the movie cuz it's quicker, you know? And if you watch the movie and it's yeah. 2 hours and it sucks, then you've only invested 2 hours. If I if I read a book and it takes me 2 months and it's horrible. But having said that, um I I think probably the book that has meant more to me in the last few years is a, is a book um, called Chase the Lion by a guy named Mark Batterson. And um, the subtitle is, if your dream doesn't scare you, it's probably too small. Okay. And uh, it is just, I, I remember reading through it faster than I think I've read any book, except for maybe YouTube Secrets by Sean Cannell, but I was on a plane. Uh, but Chase the Lion it's it's a phenomenal book. I, in fact, when I was done, I immediately bought a copy for uh, our oldest son and our daughter, and I think even somebody else. And I said, at some point in your life, you need to read this book. 
Um, you know, it's a faith based book. It's actually based on a, on a story on, on actually a, a sentence um, in the Old Testament about uh, this guy named Benaiah who chased a, a lion into a cave on a snowy day and killed it. And so the whole book then just kind of talks about, you know, are you the are you going to go through life just kind of showing up? Or are you going to go through life? you know, using your purpose and, and dreaming big and doing big and, and, you know, and, and seeing what God can do. It's, it's just, it's just a phenomenal book. And I've read a couple of his other books in Scandom, and this is by far my favorite. So you guys, you need to go find Chase Lyon and give us the other book by Sean Candle on it, YouTube. Y- yeah, it's called YouTube Secrets by Sean Cannell and also I think uh, Benji Travis. Um, okay. They run a channel uh, called uh, Video Influencers. Okay. Um, so, phenomenal yeah. book, and and if and you know I I I recommend it for anybody that's even thinking about YouTube. Um, it's it's a fairly fast read, but I wouldn't recommend reading it like you're reading a novel. What I've recommended yeah. to some folks is you know read a chapter, make some notes, stop, and then kind of, you know, write down what hit you in that chapter and kind of go through it that way. A lot of action items, a lot of just great stuff. Yep. Well, go find Chase the Lion and go find YouTube Secrets because those are two phenomenal books. And go shoo after you listen to this podcast people you need to go to amazon you need to go to audible you need to figure out how to find those two books and so kevin if you had to move and only take five things with you including miss wife and kids what would they be well i would take my uh my iphone um and we'll just assume the charger doesn't count, right? Because otherwise, the charger doesn't count. Yeah, no, I'm gonna take my iPhone because I, I, you know, I mean, that's my camera, that's my documents, that's everything like that. Um, other than that, I'd probably take a change of clothes. You know, my mother always said, "Hey, make sure you have a pair of underwear with you in case you're in a wreck." So, I, you know, I've kind of lived by that. Yes. Um, yes. I would probably take um, coffee. Yep. With me. Um, not necessarily a cup. I could drink it out of the pot if I had to. <laughs> yep. So. Um, I'd probably take um, a knife because you can do anything with it from letter opener to, you know, cut your food with it. Yeah. Um, you know, and then after that, wow, that is a good, that is a good question because there's so much stuff on my phone. Um I would say I would probably take my truck. Yep. And um, one other thing I want to add, how about a blender for Elijah's food? Thank you very much. Because, well, uh, yeah. You know, I, I kind of counted that under, you know, it would go with him. I mean, the funny thing is, um, I mean, maybe it's not funny. I, I use, there's two phrases evidently I use all the time. Funny thing and honestly. And and I try and be honest with everything I'm talking about. Um, so Elias has um, a tube. He's tube fed, which if if some people don't know what that means, he literally has a hole in his stomach. So we found out when he was very young that he's a silent aspirator, which means he can choke, and we didn't know it. So um, since he's been very young, I don't remember exactly when he literally has a hole in his stomach, and then he's got a tube, and so every he doesn't take anything by mouth, nothing. So everything he eats, like he's on a keto diet now for seizures, which has been just a godsend. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing the impact in a good way it's had. But everything he takes is through his tubes. So the the irony is with with the diet he's on and his meds, um, my wife mixes up because the the formula that he's on um, can only it, it's only got like a twenty four hour shelf life. Um, yeah. so we have to constantly mix it, but the, 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 the beauty is we don't have to blend anything. It's, it's literally just get the right, you know, 
amount of water with the formula and some extra, you know, uh, powder and mix it up and stuff like that. So may, so maybe I should say, um, instead of the coffee, I, his scales and things like that to feed him. So thanks yeah, Wynn, well, for making me feel bad about taking my coffee. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're welcome. Like you you feel bad. No, the coffee, the coffee keeps you going to measure the skill, to measure his food. Let's just put it that way. Dad needs his coffee to make Elijah function. And right. yeah, so let's just put it that way. And if your best friend had to write a book about you, what would the title be? Well, this is easy. Trying to live like Jesus when you look like Willie. Trying to live like Jesus when you look like Willie. And for those of you who don't know who which Willie Kevin is referring to, I believe he's referring to Willie Nelson. Am I yeah. correct? Yeah, that, that's, I, yeah, that, that's, that started that years ago with my oldest son. Yes. I mean, that rumor. Yes. So. so, Kevin, as we wrap this interview up, where can people find you if they choose to do so? And do you have any questions for me? Yeah, uh, the 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 best place to find me is is on my website. It's kevincolby.com. Uh, I've got links there and resources I use and things like that. In fact, they've, they they were even wanting to work together. There's a there's a contact form, and my YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com slash Kevin Colby. Um, love to have people subscribe and comment every once in a while. But uh, yeah, one question I had for you is why podcasting? What drew you to podcasting well and and i'm doing it again actually unfortunately i had i tried the youtube um thing way back when but unfortunately not to say that i don't love my my youtubers and not to say that i don't love youtube unfortunately a fan told me she goes i want to support you but I can't keep my laptop open and watch you while I'm working. And so I'm like, oh, great. There goes my YouTube out the door. I need to meet with, meet my fans where they're at. And so then I discovered podcasting, and then it all went off of the YouTube and then mm -hmm. um, to podcasting, and now back on 10 years later, the funny thing is, 10 years later, I've now hooked up with a YouTube team that is um, broadcasting uh, their main headquarters. The main person is in India, believe it oh, or not. Wow. And so I have hooked up with a YouTube team called I Am, T I Am BTV. And then we're doing the wonderful things. But um, how I got hooked up with those guys is I was um, interviewed by one of their hosts. And the people emailed me out of the clear blue sky and said, well, do you want to come back on? And I'm like, sure, I'll come back on and share my story. They're like, no, we want you to have your own show and i'm like my own what my own what you want me to get in front of the camera and i said sure i'll take that risk i'll get in front of the camera and we'll make it work and so i have that i also have my podcast but other than that um I am a full-time content creator with a disability, as you know, and I am trying to step it up into the YouTube game on my own personal channel. So, as I said, I may be working with Kevin as soon as I get to the East Coast to you guys because I need to step it up now. I need to put my face in front of the camera just a little bit more, and I know this tricks of the trade that Kevin needs to teach me. Mm -hmm. And as they say, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. And so I think that um, 
the student is now buddy now she, now i just have to find out who's going to be my teacher and <laughs> it's looking like it's looking like more and more that um kevin is going to be my teacher because uh um if any of you guys want to help me out have at it but um the more skilled i get in youtube the um better i will be that will be my project when i get to the east coast and but for right now i'm sticking with podcasting and just doing a little bit of youtube that's cool so yeah but i wanted to i I wanted to thank you guys for com coming on this wild journey with me and um, and talking to Kevin and listening to Kevin and hopefully you gain some insights on what it's like raising a child with a disability and what it's like being brave so drawn on and what it's like YouTube coaching and please, please, please support um, not only people with disabilities, but their caregivers alike. If you give um, Kevin's videos a like and subscribe, that will make Kevin very, very happy because um, not only does he do YouTube work, he's a video coach, as he said, but he's also an amazing father to all his three kids and one of them happens to have severe disabilities. So if you guys can help Kevin out by giving him a like and subscribe to his YouTube channel, that would help me out just so we can raise awareness about um, disabilities and about YouTube and that. And Elijah, little dude, loves the camera, mind you, loves <laughs> the camera. He's, He's been taught well, and so hopefully he'll appear in one of Kevin's YouTube videos nowadays. But please go follow Kevin on his personal profile so you know um, what we're dealing with. And I appreciate you guys for listening. Also, like and subscribe to this podcast. That will help every single content create out, including my own. And if you guys want to go find me on the YouTube, yes, just type in my name on YouTube. My work will pop up. Go go like and subscribe there and we'll make it work. And so I, you guys will see me on YouTube when I get to the East Coast. And I will let you guys know when my go date is. We're working on that right now. And then we're um we're going to make all things coming together here and i will catch you guys later bye you guys thanks you guys <laughs>